What I'm trying to say is that the best time to kick off your freelancing career is when you are still working. Why? I'm not going to discuss the other things, but what I believe is the most important is because of the finances. When you're working full time, you have a stable salary that you're expecting, right? So quitting your job to start freelance is not always a better decision. Uh, since you have to pay for, you know, we have bills, um, some, they do have kids, they have to feed them, uh, send them to school, etc. So don't quit your full-time job just yet, and you can start freelancing on the side. And I will let you narrow the steps uh, in a while. It will give you a buffer and that you don't need to take unnecessary risk by quitting your job. So start freelancing part-time, even when you're working full-time. Because freelancing as a part-time job is a great way to start your freelancing career. As I've said, it is a low risk way to start working for yourself and to see um, it, if freelancing is a good fit for you. You can test the waters first before diving so deep into it. Plus, it can help you build your skills and portfolio along the way. It's a step-by-step -step process, guys. So the main difference between part-time and full-time work is the amount of work you accept. That's why I really, really suggest to become a part-time freelancer so that you can accept smaller jobs with flexible deadlines. So again, my advice as a complete beginner is to try freelancing part-time before going all in. Well, unless you have other valid reasons, so by all means, do as you please go full-time if you think that's uh, a good reason for you. Before I reveal the 10 tips or 10 steps, I'd like to emphasize this first. You should check with your employer or your company uh, regarding the company's policy of working on uh, such side hustles such as this one, freelancing. There are some contracts that will forbid you from accepting freelance work outside of the company. So you make sure of this first. So what are your uh, NDA act with your current company? All right. I suggest that it's better to be open with your uh, company before doing anything else um, so that you are always on the safe side. So without any further ado, and having said that, here are 10 tips for getting started as a freelancer, even when working full-time. Step number one, start by providing what you already know or what you love to do. So if you're unsure what kind of freelance project to take on, you can ask yourself, what do I know about? Remember, what we're after here is for you to kickstart your freelancing career. We don't want a very long learning curve. So let's look at what you already know now. If you're an accountant by profession, what skills do you have? What data entry skills do you possess? If you're working in an office admin, if you're working in an insurance or online credit company, etc., what administrative skills do you think you can offer for the businesses? If you're working in the BPO, what are your skills that you think you can transfer to other companies? Maybe it's your skills in presentation, documentation, data administration, data research, etc. All right. If you don't have skills you think you can use in your freelancing career, as I've said, ask yourself what you love to do. If you're into graphics, maybe check out canva.com. It's free to create an account and try doing some graphic designs and creating social media posts. If you have a talent for writing, try to check out blogs that are written in company blog section. For example, Shopify. You check out the blog section and what are they writing about? What do they write about who they write for, etc., etc., or go to medium.com and search for similar topics that interest you and create your own account there. As I've said, you don't need to overcomplicate things at first, guys. What you need to do is to start with something. So, again, step one is start by providing what you already know and what you love to do. Step two is find your niche and identify your target market. It is very important that you um, you identify this on the get-go before you start. So why you need to do this? Because this will greatly help you in getting clients if you have a specific target market. Meaning to say, you're not offering a general service, but a specific service. So it's easier for you to target people you wanna work with. 
For example, from what you decided in step one that I've said earlier, considering your natural inclinations, you have an experience and you have some connections in this uh, certain industry, you realized you wanted to create social media graphics using Canva or Adobe. So you basically, let's say you wanted to become a graphic designer, then make your pick, focus on delivering graphic designs specifically for social media posts. So now you know what niche you want, right? You want a graphic design specifically for social media. Then who is your target market? Since you have an inclination for fitness, let's assume you wanted to focus on fitness instructors or gym owners. Please understand that this doesn't mean you should downright refuse to work on anything else outside from the fitness gurus, etc. But having a niche and a target market, you will be building your expertise experiences, your expertise, and reputation in one specific line of work, which eventually will help you to build your portfolio and to continually expand your network to build your premium freelancing career later on. Number three is create your offer. So your offer is simply the service you wanted to market. For example, your offer you offer social media graphics, as we mentioned in the previous step, for fitness instructors or gym owners. Or probably you decided you wanted to become a writer. If you're a writer, you offer technology content writing or cryptocurrency or Bitcoin content writing. All right. So create your offer. It is basically your services on what you decided in steps one and two. So that's it. So now subscribe to Article and Design Podcast. Follow us on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. You can also watch for free only on our YouTube channel to search for article and design. All these are for free, so please subscribe now to never miss any of our episodes. See ya!